this episode does have some profanity in it. So if you have any little ears around that might be sensitive to said language, we invite you to excuse them now. Please press pause. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Freedom Unfolding, an inclusive, holistic community that offers education, options, and inspiration to find your truth, find your voice, and find your freedom. We're so excited to have our entire team here today to uh, connect about releasing what needs to be released during this dynamic season. I'd love to briefly introduce our team. Here with us today, we have Maya and Heather Rose from Free to Be Healed, where they specialize in supporting the softening and release of both unprocessed emotions and trauma held within the body through body work, energy work, and conscious communication. Heather and Maya, do you want to say hello? Hi. Hello. So good to be here. So grateful to be here with you all. So glad you're here. We also have Jillian from Elemental Healing and Coaching. She's a clinical hypnotherapist, mother, wife, and lover of life who specializes in trauma-informed root work that allows the innate intelligence of the subconscious to lead the way. Jillian, would you like to say hello? Hello, hello. So wonderful to be here with, with all the listeners and with you ladies as well. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Golveg from the Amber Serpent. She's an energy healer and empath empowerment coach who specializes in the assisting of the highly sensitive to transform an existence that can feel mundane into one that's magical. Ooh, who doesn't love magic? You know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenny Lynn. I'm really excited to be here. I'm honored. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And then we have Mel Roden from You Got Mel, or AKA Coach Mel. She is a spiritual startup strategist, assisting spiritual entrepreneurs. She believes that when you are personally out of alignment, you are professionally out, off of assignment. And she provides resources and support to get you back on track. Would you like to say hi, Mel? Yes, thank you. Hey, Jenny Lynn, and hey, everybody else. I am so happy to be here today. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Thanks, Mel. And then we also have Sarah Mata from Loving Light. Sarah is an integrative health practitioner who incorporates energetic bodywork, clinical hypnotherapy, and a trauma-sensitive techniques to support her clients in remembering their wholeness, inner strength, and resiliency. Yay. Hi, friends. It's great to be with you today. We have a really potent and powerful episode for you. So um, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. And last but not least, we have myself. Aloha. I'm Jenny Lynn from Pineapple Shores Wellness. And I take a mind-body aloha spirit approach to wellness through yoga, mindset, empowerment, coaching, and guided meditation. And I love to help my clients anchor into peace and positivity and co-create your path to wellness. Uh, so today I just want to honor um, the time that we're in. We still are coming together collectively through Zoom, uh, recording this podcast. So thank you for your grace. If there are any pauses or any technology things, um, but we've, we've set an intentional space and called in all of the angels of technology to help us today. So um, we're super excited to offer this third episode to you. Um, and today we're going to be reading the goodbye letters that we referenced in our episode two. And these goodbye letters are essentially uh, a letters, these are snippets from our letters. And the intention of the letters are to um, release and say goodbye to our past paradigm, our, our life pre-coronavirus quarantine um, before our world radically changed, uh, and we began experiencing, you know, something that we've never experienced before and doing it all collectively. So we are just going to, um, read our letters and then we'll, you know, make this a conversation and we invite you to send your letters into our, if you feel bold enough to post it right onto our Facebook page, you can. You can also email them to us if you're listening to this after the fact and you would still would like to do this exercise with us. We definitely invite you. 
So first up, we have the lovely, amazing Golveig, and she is going to take the mic and read us her letter. Thank you, Jenny Lynn. Dear Past Paradigm, it's been a trip. I appreciate your preoccupation with survival and that you feel the need to assert authority and control in order to feel safe. To put bluntly, this relationship just is not working for me anymore. I have tried to make compromises in order to make room for your version of reality, but every time I do, it just doesn't feel right. The challenges that you have provided me by inciting fear in my system was ironically also what provided the impetus for me to make a journey to reclaim my independence, freedom, and personal power. Thank you for these lessons. Past paradigm, my hope is that you learn to love yourself and feel safe without the need to control or manipulate others. My commitment is to take the lessons that I have learned through our relationship and this time, choose me, choose love, choose freedom, and choose personal sovereignty. The light and the darkness in me recognizes and honors the light and the darkness in you. Thank you for the lessons as well as the gifts. In gratitude, G. So for me, my letter, to summarize like the energy that I feel that I'm really letting go, like all of these um, adjectives, that I've used to describe the past paradigm, the uh, over assertion of authority and control, manipulation, and so on and so forth, to me encapsulates what I would describe as the old out of balance patriarchal system. To me, to choose love, choose freedom, and choose personal sovereignty is how I would describe stepping into a paradigm in which the sacred masculine and sacred feminine are both in balance, in line, and are equals. And that both of those energies are respected and valued equally. So for me, that is what I would like to invite in. I would like to invite in a, a, a unification, a marriage, if you will, between the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine where there's freedom, there's love, there's personal sovereignty and respect, and that everyone is valued, and that both energies are valued. So that's what I have with my letter. Um, thank you very much for letting me, let me share. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing Goldveig. I love the intentionality um, that all of us have, um, and it's very obvious that you took the time to put that into your letter. Next, we have Sarah. Awesome. So I'll read my letter. Goodbye to the paradigm of deceit, hidden agendas, and enslavement, dissolving this infrastructure of greed and destruction. Goodbye to the old way of being, releasing the crippling mentality of lack, the mentality of us versus them and the underlying belief in separation. Farewell to the feelings of not being good enough, not being lovable, not being valuable. These systems of thought have served their purpose now, and it's time to move forward. I'm grateful for the mirror that you provided to reveal the wounds buried deep within. I'm leaving this baggage behind so I can stand fully in myself, fully embracing my essential nature, my essence identity, the pure unconditional love of my true being. It's my time now, time for my wholeness, my health, my boundaries, my sovereignty, my innate intelligence, my life. It's time for me and my choice. So this letter created an interesting activation in my life and the invitation that we're giving our audience potentially will have the same effect if you choose to uh, take on this mission. It's something that might seem small and 
yet there is a potency and a potentiality for a very big impact. And I know that I've had that in my own life. Just from sitting down to write this letter, the ripple moved through without me even realizing it. And what happened was, is that all of those things that were hidden, when I talk about the wounds that were buried deep within, they came up to be like, hey, this is us. This is what you were talking about. This is the baggage you wanted to let go of. How do you want to release that? And so what I've done this week, what I've realized is I've been able to release these things with compassion and taken the opportunity to have a neutral perspective and unconditional acceptance for what was. Having compassion for how I've created these thought patterns, how certain events, certain traumas, certain ways of being were necessary to serve me to survive at the time. Things that were necessary for the structure of our world to survive in the moment that was. And now we're in a new moment. And so we don't need things to be as they were anymore. We can have something new. And I think this opportunity for myself and for anyone who's willing to step into it really allows for us to have more sovereignty and more agency about how we want to move forward. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the support of all the amazing women in this group to help with that grieving and transition and honoring of the emotions that go along with this. And I invite all of us, each of us listening, to consider the new way. Because in any moment, you can be present to what is and choose a new way of being. Thanks, Jenny. Yes, thank you. Oh, such good stuff. And I love that you peeled back all of the layers. Like what I'm, what I heard you say was that there were, were many layers to this and, you know, it wasn't just sitting down and writing a letter. You really um, dove deep. So I appreciate that. Next we have Miss Heather. The time has come to say goodbye. I have communicated with you time and again, and you are simply not hearing me. My values and priorities are centered in love and compassion, whereas you seem to be set in ways of competition and greed. The lack of respect and the amount of complete disregard you have when it comes to my body, my feelings, and my truth has made it very clear that you are not capable of valuing me as much as I value myself. I understand that the thought of me having autonomy is terrifying to you, and it feels threatening to your deep desire to have all of the control. And as much as I understand your desire for control comes from a need to feel safe, the way that you go about getting your needs met is toxic and abusive. Your methods of gaining control have been through shaming and manipulation with an agenda to disempower me, to keep me small and quiet. Well, I'm done with that. That is not who I am, how I operate, nor is it how I deserve to be treated. My body is my temple. My feelings have value and my truth matters. As I leave this relationship, I want you to know that I release you with as much love, compassion and forgiveness as I have for myself. I do not have regrets or animosity towards you. In fact, I'm deeply grateful. I'm walking away fully in my power connected to my truth and embodied in love. I wouldn't have any of that without the dynamics of this relationship, pushing me so far into the darkness of my own shadow that I discovered the true nature of my light. So with this letter, like Sarah, I can relate that um, when we say goodbye, even if it's in a time of really wanting to walk away, that it's still a process to grieve what we're letting go of, a process of something that was once familiar to us. And, you know, I think with this, what I realized is that above all else, 
I'm saying goodbye to the paradigm that invokes fear with a way to control you. And that is what I'm really done with. And in really anchoring into my own truth and standing fully in my power because I matter. Thank you, Jenny. You do matter. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Whew. Y'all are some awesome, brave women. I'm just saying. All right. Next we have Maya. Thank you. I'm a little nervous to speak up and I'm just going to be present and hear for myself and grateful to be in this group. Um, so I'm going to begin. I feel like I've been the only one fighting the good fight in this relationship old paradigm and I don't want to fight anymore. I genuinely thank you for the love you showed me and the efforts that you did put in. It was just enough stable ground for me to release responsibility for your shortcomings to discover my own worth. I have learned the true reality of love without condition and I wish you the same joy and peace. I have learned that I am not fear. In fact, it is safe to be me and I have space to be free. I'm done putting myself on the back burner and sacrificing for you. I have tried to live up to your impossible standards by constantly working to prove my own worth and win your approval. It's just a race I cannot win. There is no finish line where I will be better, happier, more of myself if I can push through one more painful obstacle course. I admit that half the time you weren't even asking things of me. I was spinning and anticipating my next move in a trauma drama survival program of panic and toxic shame. The truth is that I've been scared to be seen as magical and powerful for fear of punishment and persecution. I've been wearing feelings of differentness alienation, isolation, and inherent sickness as a loose protective cloak between me and all of life's dangers, successes, and failures. I release this codependent and all-consuming relationship, claiming my potency and my ground in alignment with this new paradigm of peace, possibility, and love and community. I wish you the same journey of awakening from the nightmare of false evidence appearing real. Fear, in other words. I hope that you awaken to the depths of your own kindness and your capacity to receive the love available for you. Woo! It's a catharsis. Yes. You did it, girl. I did it, yeah. <laughs> I think um, if I have a little time to speak, for me it's kind of the vulnerability and, and the being seen as a, a person with a history of, you know, mental illness or, or diagnosis and making the separation between an insane society and insane individual and in the loops of not wanting to blame and not wanting to scapegoat and also like take responsibility to be in health and sovereignty and sanity and for me that's been like a very unwinding process of so many layers of truth and love and fear and um non-judgment and uh, like looking back at this layer, this letter, like it's, there's like a sense of desperation and like letting go of anger and sadness and just like honoring the layers of emotion and um, the need to feel any one way in one day. Like looking back at that letter, I was like feeling angry and now I'm feeling sad and honoring space for all the emotions and all the different angles and perspectives of wellness and that there's not one way and there's not one right and when we try to fit into a box generation after generation and individual after individual that's when things eventually compress implode and explode and and there's newness coming from what's outside of the box yes i love that um i'm reminded of one of my favorite music artists india Irie. she has a uh, lyric in one of her songs that says, I'm dropping these bags, I'm making room for my joy. And as you were reading, that's what came to my mind. You're dropping your bags and you're making room for permission and freedom and it's beautiful. 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right, well, next is yours truly, Jenna. Here we go. Dear past normal, if there is such a thing, I'd like to thank you for your lessons and honor that you have gotten me here safely. And by you, I mean God, my inner knowing, intuition, and life experiences have all led me here to this time and space. I release the glorification and gratification of busy, 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 busy. I hope and pray that this dynamic season has revealed all the things that need to be addressed in our government, our food supply, and especially our healthcare system here in the USA. I collectively grieve for the lives lost in the world. I grieve for the division and brokenness of our world and current state. I find myself avoiding processing a lot of these things that are happening in the world right now because as an empathic person, it's been too much to bear. I've even found myself facing resistance to writing this letter. I've observed myself avoiding processing my own feelings because it has been too hard to know how to feel when your whole world is flipped upside down. Routines are gone. The need to go anywhere physically has been completely erased. The need to be present and continue working is still here. Or if you're not working, the feeling and desire to contribute to the greater good or whole has been present. I am, however, grateful for this season to have been able to go inward and to reflect on what truly matters to me, um, my partner, my inner circle, and my family. And I lean into grace and allow for a more harmonious future. I know that things cannot go back to the way that they once were and that they won't always stay how they are during this quarantine season brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. I boldly proclaim healing and harmony as we collectively find the new sweet spot for what our new normal will be. Thank you, teacher, and bye, Felicia. <laughs> Whew, so I got emotional during reading that. Wow. Um, a lot of grief has been moving through and all the feels and you know, a big part of who I am is I am a feeler. I had a leader that um, worked at that big box coffee store with the green circle on the outside of it. And <laughs> he said, you know, you wear your heart on your sleeve, like just go with it, be, you know, embrace it. And he, he said that to me so many years ago. And I still remember that was probably some, somewhere before 2005. And so the old me would have said, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't believe I'm crying. But you know what? It's just energy moving, right? And this season has been really interesting and very transformational and empowering and all of the things, you know, in our last episode, we talked about grief and, and I've experienced many of those emotions that go along with it. And I'm grateful for this season and for this amazing group of women that I'm sitting here and connecting with and sharing with you all. And thank you, teacher. <laughs> thank you, quarantine lessons. Moving on, we have the beautiful Jillian. I'll give you the mic, girlfriend. Thank you for passing the mic. So I'll start with my... I, I had a little bit more that I wanted to talk about, but I, I wanted to start with my, my letter just like you all did. So here it goes. Old paradigm. Most of all, I am saying goodbye to disassociation, to lack of authenticity. Goodbye to the paradigm of being right or wrong. Goodbye to the unquenchable thirst that comes from holding myself and others as the judge and jury to the monster that was created by this limited black or white, wrong or right perspective. 
an opportunity that once was whispering is now shouting from the rooftops. Awareness is the key that unlocks our individual and collective chains, chains to which we have surrendered to through disassociation. As a survival response in countless seasons of hidden trauma, I say goodbye to ignoring any longer the resonant calls for truth and for unity. So in talking about this process, uh, you know, that, that everybody else has kind of mentioned in terms of what each of us has moved through to write this and um, to really kind of get to drop into that space of what it is that we are wanting to release and also perhaps what, what we're wanting to embrace. And I know for me, a lot of the time, and, and this might be helpful to some listeners, you know, who haven't really written that letter yet. Um, a lot of the time it can be easy to have that frame of reference of, you know, what do I want and what is keeping me from getting there? And that was a big part of this experience for me was the, what's keeping me from getting there. There's just so, so much, you know, so much process and uh, different limiting beliefs and experiences and a lot of um, the duality of, you know, trying to be what others, I, what I thought others wanted um, or what I thought others would be happy with or what I thought perhaps, you know, initially even, um, you know, what clients might want. And when I am moving through this space and I feel like it's kind of a, um, almost a continuum of going deeper within it and in moving through this space that I feel like I've kind of been moving through all year long and maybe even in a larger um, way through the last couple years, I feel like has kind of really per provided the foundation for this intensity that is, you know, really gone a lot deeper. And, um, and in that, I, there's been a lot of healing that has happened in terms of releasing the, the worries about what others think of me and if I'm enough um, to echo a lot of what was said in, in other terms and in everybody else's letter. I think there's some level of that. And, you know, that experience, the sensation of the not good enoughness and different times, different experiences where that came up. And, um, and just really honoring each, each little part of me um, that had that belief and, and allowing myself to integrate that. And I, I would say that the invitation with this letter is, as those things do come up, if they do, is to really just honor them in a way that is knowing that what they really need in order to be integrated, in order to have the healing happen and to move into the new paradigm is, is truly that sense of honoring it and allowing that expression to meet the need in a way that we discussed with uh, the, last, the last podcast. So yeah, and, and that's kind of the, the invitation I would say that is good to consider. Absolutely. Thank you, Jillian. I, I love how we create our own words, not enough, not enoughness. What did, how did you put that? Not enoughness? Yes. Not it's enough. a word now, right? It's totally a word now. <laughs> yes. And so it is. All right. Next we have Coach Mel. Thank you, Jenny Lynn. All right. So let's get started. Dear Pass Paradigm, I just wanted to say thank you, and also it hurts. I realize I have a purpose, and the pain had a purpose. I get that, 
but you didn't have to do me the way you did. That fucking sucked. I was starting to get comfortable, too comfortable. And I started to settle into my complacency. Yes, I was taking my sweet ass time stepping into my reason for being, but that's my prerogative. This is my life and I'm taking back my crown. I don't ever wanna see you again. You best stand clear out of my way because I'm about to social distance your ass back to where you came from. I hope you see where this is headed because I am over the moon excited and yes, maybe a little scared, but don't worry. I won't forget the lessons. And when I think about the past, I may wince from some of the pain that it caused, but I will also smile at the adventure that it was. No hard feelings. I lovingly released you. Go in peace. So my process for um, writing this letter is there are some, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you can tell from the letter, but there are some people that this letter is directed to, some relationships that I had, toxic relationships that were emotionally draining. And to be quite honest with you, I can't look back on those and completely be, I guess, upset or angry about it because like every relationship, it's a reflection of who you are and there's a lesson that you learn from each person that you encounter. And so there were definitely some lessons that I have learned from these relationships, but it's time for me to move on. And so that's what that letter was about. And what I think is interesting, and I don't think we thought about this when we were gonna release this um, episode and this particular podcast, but there's like, I don't know when you'll be listening to this, but there's like a new moon starting like tomorrow. And during new moons, I love writing letters. And so I think it's interesting that we're reading these letters like right now, where we talk about the past and we're banishing what's old and making way for the new. And I think this is very synchronistic. And so my process for this is to banish the old, still appreciate it again and lovingly release it, but then make room for what's new. And I think it was Jillian who talked about who do you wanna be or who do you wanna show up as? And so in order for us to be able to do that, we've got to recognize and embrace and grieve what no longer serves us and then make room for the new beginnings and what we're trying to accomplish in this particular time. And so, um, like I said, I love that there is a new moon coming up. Um, I absolutely love um, that these relationships that I'm referring to actually begin to end right around uh, us entering into the quarantine. And so they haven't actually been uh, in my life this whole time. And so I know that some things have been flying around um, social media saying there are probably people who are coming out of this quarantine better than when they went in. And I'm definitely one of those people who are coming out of this quarantine better than when I went in. And so it's been such a transformation for me these last couple of months. And so I am lovingly releasing all that no longer serves me so that I can make room for the new. And I hope that you do too. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Coach Mel. I love that lovingly releasing. So, and that was a perfect segue. You know, you talked about welcoming in the new and uh, we always want to leave you, our listeners, with a practical tool that you can uh, use in your own journey. And so our invitation to you, uh, the tool of the week is welcoming in the new. And so this will be a letter again. Um, however, this time, by saying goodbye, that creates space for newness, for new things, for new things to blossom and grow, um, for intentionality of what you put in this space. So our invitation is to you is, what do you want in your life? What do you want to birth out of this corn season? What newness are you going to be welcoming into your life? So with that, uh, the invitation is to join us next week, and we will all be reading our uh, hello and welcoming in the newness letters, and just have a discussion around space and how when you make new space, it allows for new blessings to come in. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also email us at freedomunfolding at gmail.com. 
Thank you so much for listening. Join our community every Thursday right here at 3.33 p.m. Arizona time to find your voice, find your truth, and find your freedom. This is Freedom Unfolding.